Hello, and welcome to the Too Big Game Club. I'm your host, Liam Gallagher, and this is our third episode of our playthrough of Banjo-Kazooie for the N64. The Too Big Game Club is a club where we play through video games. We pick one a month, and we play through together as a community in order to learn more about game design and the history of games and how to make games yourself. So, we're playing Banjo-Kazooie to take a look at action platformers of the 64-bit era. So you can find us on the web at theliamgallery.com slash 2 club. We're also on Facebook and on Twitter and on Twitch and on How Long to Beat and whatnot. Uh, all under slash 2 club. That's the number two. So, here we are in Banjo-Kazooie. We got some stuff to do. This is where we are right now. We've got 19 puzzle pieces. Um, and it's time to just go exploring more worlds. Alright, it seems I don't have a very good handle on the world map, so we're just gonna go exploring. Um, so there's Great Shield of Space, there's an enemy, there's Church Cove Cove, which we've already unlocked, and I think cleared completely. Um, so we need to find ourselves another picture frame. It's probably doable now that we have more, uh, Kazooie skills. Um... Okay, let's get up there. Nineteen. So we only need five, so let's do it. Yeah, we do want to place all our pieces. Just press Z. Done. Alright. So now we gotta go track down Clanker's Cavern. Which I don't know where that is, but we're gonna find it. Clanker's Cavern. Maybe it's down here. So one of the things that's interesting about this is that you unlock the uh, levels um, at a different place than the levels actually are. Um, which is interesting. It's a way to do it. I guess it's a way of changing itself from uh, Mario 64, where you just straight up jump through the picture frames. I don't know if that was intentional or if that's just my read on it. Um, but naturally, this game is going to get a lot of comparisons to Mario 64, the uh, progenitor of the 3D platforming adventure game. I'm thinking this big mouth. No, this is where Treasure, Tro Co Treasure Trove Cove was. So the other place seems sort of sewery, pipey. So maybe we've got to find a sewery, pipey area. What is it? This looks likely. Let's get swimming. Camera, please. Some eggies. Where are eggies? Um. So, if you're not caught up on the plot, uh, we're trying to <laughs> save Flute Bear from Gratilda, who uh, has stolen uh, Tootie, which is her real name, in order to steal her good looks with magic. So we can prevent that from happening. Uh, this does not look like our place. There's uh, Gratilda's sister, though. I believe there is no world map. No. Okay. We'll find it though. Don't worry, guys. Um. Yeah. So there's not much of a story to speak of. Although I think in some ways this game benefits from that. I don't know how much more fun this game would have been if it was really heady. Um. All right. We can get through there. That's progress. One barrier gone. No. No. In talking to uh, Brooke about his experiences playing through this game, he uh, reflected that he didn't know if this game was teaching him uh, good lessons about women. Um, 
with the whole 2D Gruntilda conflict. But I'd argue that this game really isn't teaching anybody good lessons about anything. Um, whether or not it, this game is a uh, source for cultural information about, I guess, body issues or uh, you know, the, the female figure and its role in media um, is a valuable area of discussion, though. Um, and I suppose for me it comes down to how much weight you're willing to give um, that element of the game, whether or not you're willing to take that seriously um, and say, yes, Banjo-Kazooie is a text and it has meaning and it says something. Or to say that there's elements of fiction or interactive play that don't necessarily represent or have an analog to anything in the world. Oh, we don't have boot power yet. So we gotta speak to bottles to get that. Um, so, so it's. I think it's a valid question that's up for grabs. Um, do you think that Banjo Kazooie says enough meaningful things about um, the world that it can be held responsible, uh, or that it's? Oh no, piranha water. There you go. Environmental hazards. We're being gated there. They're using the unlockable power of piranha to, uh, or rather, boots to keep us back from that barrier, uh, from presenting us from seeing further areas of the game before we uh, really take a, a look at its cove. Okay. So down. Oh no. Strange camera angles. Okay. Um, where do we have to go? So let us clear through here with our music notes, or our beam date notes, but we still don't have enough of the resource to get through. So maybe it's over here. We've already been here though, maybe I just missed something. Um, so, I mean, obviously there's lots in this game um, that can't be taken just at face, right? I mean, obviously we're not going to learn anything about birds or bears from playing this game. Um, but I think in some ways that argument isn't necessarily that useful in understanding Banjo Kazooie because um, we have like a cultural script, if that's a term I'm betting as I go, um, that deals with uh, the power and beauty and the desirability of the female form, and we don't necessarily have a dialogue in our society about, uh, oh, this looks right, about um, the allegorical value of um, birds and bears cooperating to get honeycombs. So, I, I guess it's a question to me about how seriously are you willing to take Banjo Kazooie? Um, I am definitely of the camp where I'm willing to take this game not very seriously at all. Um, and I feel that uh, people are understandably sensitive about the uh, the body image and like a uh, femininity politic uh, element of life. Just the new moved vibe. Okay, cool. And so I don't hold it against um, other people being more sensitive about it than I. Um, but I think if you want to get down there, at best, um, I, I could get around saying that Banjo Kazooie. Oh man, oh boy! <laughs> that guy doesn't care about gender politics. Um, is an expression of an issue and not necessarily 
the source of it. Um, so, I could never saddle. Okay, so that's not happening anyway. Wow. Brr, three honeycombs, a hit. Um, how better off is uh, Banjo Kazooie for getting that uh, qualification? Uh, I'm not sure. Sometimes I, I wonder if the fun has been ruined or if it wasn't actually fun to begin with. And those kinds of gags about uh, ugly witches stealing uh, the beauty of um, the young were just expressions of uh, sexism. There's another read here where um, Banjo Kazooie is very heavily leaning on uh, the fairy tales and the subject matter of fairy tales. Um, and so, bzz, I am Clanker, which is garbage grinder. Clanker, not like dirty water. Want fresh air. Okay. Got something to pass that uh, eighth note beam. Um, and to so a certain extent that this game is just trawling the depths of an existing canon of, of narrative style in um, fairy tales and uh, sort of like western low 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 fantastic uh, folklore. Um, this is a green trap, I can see that. Um, yeah, poor guy, he's got a little rash, I don't know. Um, we're gonna help him out though. So, it's complicated. Um, hopefully that, that element of the plot is, which is so thin in the first place, is not as such that it prevents anybody from actually enjoying this game. Um, I feel like there's a lot of media out there that is still valuable, even though you have to tolerate um, either the fact that it's, you know, dated or made by cultural dinosaurs who don't realize that um, people don't like their masculine power trip fantasy media anymore. Ah, oh, this is a greed trap, right? Designed for me. Because I need those honeycombs. I guess I get them with Aggie. Um, yeah. Come to me, honeycomb! Well, nothing I'm better off than I was. Okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna risk it. It would be different if I had four, because I would know that I could at least survive the hit. But there's no sense in getting an extra honeycomb only to have myself killed. I don't know where this goes. I can't see. Oh, that's <laughs> Yeah, so this, um, the shock jump has an interesting mechanic where you get the bounce before, oh no, um, the big jump. She's be playing with that there. It's nice. Let's go explore some of these tubes. So this is not um, the area we unlocked. I'm noticing. Um, but I guess with a lot of these types of games, you just explore, and when you find stuff, you find stuff, and that's just fine. Okay, we did like a loop. That's cool. We found a Jinjo down there. I'm willing to call that progress. Can we go inside Clanker? I believe we can. Over the silence, I can hear my button presses. Okay, so it seems to be a, uh, some sort of blowhole, which is novel for something that looks like a shark to me. Ah, oh, you're killing me, guys! The greed traps. I must get away at some point to kill those guys. I guess one of the situations with the Jinjos is that, um, and the, the 
being eighth notes is that when you leave a um, an area, you lose your total. So I guess with the Jinjos, you need to find all of them in order to get your prize, your puzzle piece off them. So I'm hoping that it doesn't turn out that I end up having to leave this area. Whoa, controls underwater. Um, Yeah, so I mean, I think that there's another thing where um, obviously little things can be harmful, but I think that um, the seriousness of the analysis of something kind of needs to match the seriousness of the work itself. Um, so narratively, I, this isn't really doing a whole lot of work, and so it appeals to me that it isn't necessarily sensible to do a lot. Oh, geez. Civic mutants are we. Jigsaw is ours. Fight us on this. Okay, I'll fight you. Oh, man, you guys got health. Bad for you. This is the one thing I really need right now. So, I mean, we're learning about how uh, pollution mutates snippets, which is very sad to me. They didn't ask for that. They, um, the snippets talk in a pretty, uh, old fashioned style, though. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I believe that um, coming to a game or any piece of media with like an appropriate level of seriousness for the work is um, something to be lauded. Um, it's very easy to uh, take a comment out of context. You know, we've all been in that situation where um, somebody changed the rules of the dialogue on us. You know, like one person said, uh, oh, you man, you know, I hate it when uh, they don't fill my, I don't know, this is, I'm making up as I go, but like, I hate it when they don't fill up my pop all the way. Um, and all they're trying to do is just like say, I was looking forward to having pop, and now I'm gonna have less than I'm gonna have. I thought I would like, you know, boo, sort of an empty complaint. And then someone says, well, that's a really entitled thing to say, and is, you know, uh, de demonstrative of a obesity epidemic in our country. You'd be Canadians and Americans in that case. Um, and obviously, the initial comment was not intended to have bearing on an obesity epidemic. It was just being like, aww, pop. Um, so I think it's important to go about um, your analysis of games in the same way, where there's definitely dumb games that are dumb and made by people who had absolutely no intent for them to speak on a given topic. Um, so I think it's important to consider that when we're talking about like the goals of the creators or what the message is. Um, because it's all good, well and good to talk about Banjo-Kazooie and say, okay, well, here's this plot element. What are the ways in which it's um, presented that are an issue for us as viewers that we don't want to see necessarily reflected in future works? Or we don't necessarily want them to be a part of our own creative output. But it's another thing to say the creators of this game are monsters uh, because of the inclusion of the 2D uh, ooh, camera, uh, Gratilda thing. Um, which isn't to say that I think that people should get a free pass to just, you know, do terrible things and then say, oh, it's all what it meant. Um, but that. If we honestly want to try to, oh, I see there, buddy, to get to the bottom of what games are about and how they're made, um, and what our games say about us and the society that we live in, then I think that we need to be fair to creators, um, and that means both um, taking their games seriously and taking them seriously. Um, which means that uh, you can't just like pan people out of hand because 
uh, the thing that they made doesn't attr attract you. Oh, I need air bubbles really bad. I guess this fish is the one to follow. Oh, camera, don't kill me. Yeah, it killed me. There you go, killed by the camera. Thanks, Banjo. Killed by the camera, number one. Killed by the camera count increases. Um, right, so... Um, if you're gonna treat people all with respect and treat them seriously, you have to give them the uh, time of day and recognize that they're intelligent and capable and they're not monsters. And when they made this game, they were very, very likely um, just trying to be good, you know? <laughs> like, make a fun thing that people would enjoy um, for your benefit. Um, so, you know, to I think if you're giving treating people seriously with respect, you shouldn't assume malice where a difference of opinion or um, uh, a difference of perspective would explain the upset, right? Or even just like even incompetence, right? But uh, it's it's very tempting to assume people are evil and hate you uh, when. Obviously, there's bad eggs out there, but it's unlikely that um, the makers of a game so fruity and ridiculous uh, are filled with seething for women, and the way that they decided to give that expression was to create a plot where uh, 2D's looks are stolen by Gruntilda. Um, but on the flip side of it, treating the game seriously also means that uh, you owe the creators a sound and thorough uh, criticism. And that if there's things in the game that are BS and stupid, uh, or have uh, aged poorly, or don't necessarily reflect the world of gaming as you would like to see it, you owe it to them to, uh, to hold to that uh, perspective and holds that opinion and, and truly represent it. But at the same time, um, you need to do it in a way that, you know, respects their intelligence and the, um, uh, the authorship of the creators. Uh, and you need to field your criticism in a weighty and substantial fashion. Uh, because while everybody is definitely entitled to an opinion, there's no sense in having a stupid, poorly thought out, um, badly articulated, inflammatory opinion. Because uh, at that point, you're just a loudmouth jerk. Uh, <laughs> so it's interesting how, seemingly on the surface, games that are very lighthearted, like Banjo Kazooie, can end up being um, talking points for some pretty heavy subject matter if you're willing to. Oh, camera, please! Um, if you're willing to bring your A game and cris critical analysis uh, to the venture, these uh, swimming controls are killing me. Okay. I don't know what happened there, but we're gonna get another pass. We gotta get some bubbles though, because otherwise we're toast. Got it. Follow this guy, because he is our best friend. Um, I can imagine Brooke hating this. I feel bad for Brooke when we play a lot of these games. I feel like I'm punishing Brooke sometimes. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna go through. I think the game wants us to follow Glooper or whatever his name is. Okay, I don't know what that did. We're gonna do another lap. We're good on air, so we're gonna get these eight notes. We hear the Jinjo, the green guy. We we indeed. Um, yeah, so that this is my critical analysis. Is this game silly? And this game is stupid. And it's based in folklore uh, and uh, very silly fairy tales. And oh, I guess I did a good job. Um, and. Okay, we gotta get him out of the water. Amazing. We did it, guys. Yes. 
Oh, we were drowning during his speech. That's good. Help it. We're gonna get a Jinjo. We're gonna, we're gonna just... Oh, I gotta get the music down. Damn, you collect thons. Alright, we gotta find that stupid fish. Oh, thank you, fish. I don't understand how the fish does this, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, so the game is thoroughly silly and dumb and stupid and whimsical and ridiculous in so many other periods that even though um, the gag in our modern context um, where ideas of femininity and body issues and gender identity uh, are being debated so hotly in our culture that we shouldn't necessarily strap the game with that baggage. Uh, and I think that we can still enjoy it, even though um, were the comment made in the times that uh, we live in today, it would not be viewed so lightly. Um, we gotta remember that this game was not made in that climate. Aw, oh, poor guy. Um, so we got him fresh air. So maybe clean water is next. Um, there you go. You can ride that thing around. Um, so that's me. That's my two cents. That's how I feel about it. Let me know how you feel about it. Um, you know, all perspectives valid. All good arguments valid too. Bad arguments, not so much. <laughs> um, you know, like... It's good to have a perspective, and it's good to be passionate about the way you feel, and it's good to defend your position and engage in that discourse with your peers, because together we have to decide what the future of video games is going to be like. Um, oh, okay, that's good. Wow, this is kind of gross, but fine. Um, uh, I guess I get to pound those out later. So I guess he did say that, the, that he's going to a garbage grinder. So in some ways this makes sense. Best note score, oh boy. We're doing it. Um, oh wow, I didn't even see that. Depth of field. Okay, let's just, yeah. <laughs> That's good. We're gonna be in his mouth now. Oh, gross, guys. Gross. <laughs> what are you doing to me, Rare? I don't even know what's happening here. Ow. Um, so I guess I, it wants me to fly through the green ring first. This is what I'm figuring. Yeah. Okay. We're on a time trial. Oh no, we've got to swim. The ang- oh no. Oh no, swimming, why? Come on, cross. Oh, where is it? Camera, please! Okay. We gotta use all our platforming skills here. If I do this the first time, I'm gonna be so. Oh no. I'm not gonna do it the first time. I didn't even look at the clock. Unless I get extra time when I go through the rings. Okay, we gotta start again. And I don't think I can reach that platform from here, which is range inducing. Maybe I don't need to be flying to do this? Uno. Well, I can't imagine swimming fast enough. Yes. We will try. Alright. Where's the next one? Up above me. Please. Please, Bancho. I need it. <laughs> I don't want to have to do this a thousand times. <laughs> Alright. 
This is my guess. Let's hope it comes true. Camera, work with me. Oh no, come on. Come on. Come on. Baby needs a new jigsaw. Baby needs a new jiggy. Yes! Oh man. We did it. And now the room is filling with putrid stomach gas. Oh come on. Oh come on. I guess I can probably fly over now though. Yeah. Really, I just want everyone to be uh, intelligent and thorough and fair in their dialogue. Lucky. I'm an invulnerability feather. Yeah. I guess we are unlocking some of these abilities in order. Um, I think it expected us to come here after going to. Uh, Another place. The swampy area. Jinjo! Plus a trap. Oh, please, camera. Can very barely see where Banjo's pointing, but I did it. Like, the Vich game sense has worked. So, where is this? This is one of these hilarious, like, indoor colossal mazes. Okay. So I can probably swim back in there. Yes, thank you. Love design. Being. Um, uh, yeah. So I just want everybody to be smart and have good criticisms and lots of things to add. Um, because everyone's perspective is valuable, provided they take the time to develop it in a coherent uh, fashion. And I want everyone to be able to participate and make games as good as they can be. Um, because I firmly believe that the more people we have involved in video game production, the more interesting and diverse experiences... Oh, God, camera. God, oh, camera, please! Camera! <laughs> Stop doing it! I can't take it anymore. Um, the better of uh, a gaming community and a gaming hobby, or whatever you want, a gaming industry, whatever the word is, gaming thing will be. Um, yeah. So that's that's why I care. Um, I think there's a place for all of us in this silly world of mechanical garbage compacting uh, sharks made out of metal um, in a weird swamp thing. I guess we're not in the swamp yet. That's what you're thinking about. Okay, so we've got an note on both sides on the starboard and port of the shark. I don't want to miss anything, because backtracking in these games uh, is oftentimes humongously painful. Um, you know, it's not like playing a Metroid game where they do this beautiful thing where when you come back the next time, and here, everything is better. You've got more ammo, you've got more laser shooties, you've got more death rays, um, and so you just blow through an area that before gave you a ton of problems. Um, oh, maybe we can fly up there. Maybe, maybe that's where we just came from, though. Right. So A is not to accelerate, A is to fly up. I don't think we've gone here, though, so I'm gonna try that. Yeah, we hadn't, because otherwise it would have been... Oh no, Leah! <sighs> uh, my perception of depth. Because um, otherwise, uh, we would have gotten the dialogue about uh, the crazy feather then. Let's do it. Let's do it. I managed, guys. I perceived death. I looked at the circle shadow. Okay, so we have gone here. Or no, this is different. Goggles. 
You gotta help me here. Bottles. Old feathers. Thanks, buddy. Let's look out for us. Oh man, so many honeycombs. I like how bottles tell you not to look for any more bottles instances. So right control stick. Let's do it. We made it. And that's how you use that move. Okay, we got it. So this looks like the main garbage sorting area. Pretty deadly. So, now that we've got this puzzle piece, I think it might be time to take a quick break in our recording process. Um, it looks like I'm going to be a little bit long trying to finish this zone, so that's fine. Um, so, the 2-Bit Game Club is online at theliamgallagher.com slash 2-Bit Game Club. And uh, we're also on Facebook and on Twitter and on uh, How Long to Beat and on YouTube and all the stuff that you're used to. And that's all at slash 2-Bit Game Club. Um, so join in there to join in the discussion and learn a little more about game development and um, game design. And uh, also to listen to our back catalog because we've got a few... Uh, episodes behind us now, and many, many hours of gameplay footage to watch, filled with commentary about the game design choices. Um, so thanks so much for watching, and until next time, I've been Liam Gallagher. Um, make good games.